What's going on YouTube family? Welcome to Automotive Life, my name is Lucky and today we're gonna to be talking about the rental car recession. What's going on in the current market, how we see things shaping up, and most importantly, how you can make money from all of this going down. Now before I get into that, if you could please do me a favor, if you are in the rental business or you're in Turo, hire a car or something like that, please put in the comment section below what's it like in your current market. Because as we discuss this, it's very important that we get feedback from everybody because even some of the stuff I'm reporting today is some of the things that I've seen from my students, other places we set up, and also talking to colleagues. And so I wanna hear from you because there are hot pockets when it comes to rentals. Like Vegas, it's one of those cities where we're always gonna have rentals, we're always gonna be busy, but we're not making the same money as what we used to. Also, if you're gonna do a huge favor, gently squeeze the like button for the YouTube algorithm. It also find more amazing people like yourselves that enjoy automotive content. Also, please consider subscribing. We, we are trying to post three times a week. I've been a little slacking lately, but we will do it. And once again, follow us on Instagram at Lucky Lopez, and let's get started. So the rental car recession hit us about a month ago. I've talked to a lot of my people that are doing Turo, hire car, stuff like that, and we noticed that a consistent lower pricing every single week, and especially here in Vegas. So one of the things I wanna talk about is what happened and how we got here. Now, during the uh, pandemic, everybody and their grandma decided to jump onto Turo, and that was one of the things that helped launch my channel. I was one of the first people that talked about doing the Turo classes, actually getting your rental car license and everything else. And so we saw so many people jumping on to Turo because a lot of people weren't working, they were making their stimulus money and their cars were just sitting in their driveway. So they're like, well, why not make a few bucks off of it? You know. And so people were putting their cars up and we're talking not fancy cars, just the most beat up pieces of junk. Everything here back in the day in Vegas was going for almost $100 a day. You know, so literally everybody jumped on there. They saw it was the gravy train. Everybody had this excess money. People were traveling. Things were good. Fast forward to today, stimulus money is gone. All the PPP money is gone. Travel is up, but when it comes to rentals and stuff like that, the prices are down about 25%. And one of the main reasons why is competition. So we talked about how everybody and their grandma jumped into Turo during the pandemic. Well, now it's basically become a race to the bottom. All Turo cares about is people renting cars. So one of the first things we noticed was the more expensive cars, the exotic Highline cars, they took the first hit. You know, they're not renting as much or less often, so people don't have the capital for that. Next thing that we hit was the luxury market. A lot of my students, they're all over the country that had like C8 Corvettes, um, some Mercedes, SUV, stuff like that. They noticed a significant decrease in days. Also, now there's a lot of people that are lowering their prices. So that was the one thing. Economy cars. Economy cars are always gonna stay relatively busy um, just because of even if people do travel for business, for work, or even for pleasure, they still need a car to go somewhere. They just won't be spending that excess amount of money that we're used to seeing when it comes to people renting out these types of cars. Now, one of the reasons why I wanna talk about what's going currently on in Turo and hire car is, like I said, it's a race to the bottom. Now, what is gonna happen, what I see happening as of right now is there's a lot of people that are not business owners that are running their cars on Turo. These are just regular people that are putting their cars up there, not to make profit, not to make money, not to scale their business. They're putting their cars online just so they can pay the note. We see it all the time. You as a business owner are renting out, let's say your 2020 Toyota Camry and you're okay with insurance, um, depreciation miles and everything else. I need to rent this for 65 bucks a day, 70 bucks a day. But in the meantime, you got somebody that's got a maybe a $600, $400 car payment and they're renting this car out for $30 a day and they don't care. All they wanna get is the money for their actual, uh, their car payment. So they'll rack up the miles, beat the hell out of their car because all they care about is covering their payment because they don't either wanna go back to work or like currently right now, there's a lot of people getting laid off because the economy is slowing down. So they're putting their cars up on Turo, not as a, like I said, a money opportunity, but as something just to pay their bills. And this is what's gonna hurt the market for the next six to eight months. We're gonna get so many people that can't afford their cars and they're afraid of losing them, they're just gonna start piling them in on, on like Turo, hire car, and some of these other applications. And it's just gonna drive the price further down and down. Like I said, it's gonna become a race to the bottom. Now, if you're currently in the business and you're trying to grow and expand, be very patient, don't buy any new cars, just take your time. What's gonna happen, like I said, we're gonna have a race to the bottom for about three to six months. And as that starts to fade out, a lot of these people are, it's not gonna be worth the headache. If they have to wash a car, clean a car, and then rent it for $30, and then Turo takes 30% of that, and then they're still only making you know, a handful of dollars, they're not gonna to wanna to 
uh, wash these cars every single day and drop them off to people and deal with the headache. So a lot of these people are gonna fall by the wayside by default because they don't wanna continue on with growing their business in uh, like Turo Hire Car. So the good news is, is as you know, the next three to six months, you're gonna see a lot of these people leaving the platform because they don't wanna mess with it. The other thing I've seen is basically a lot of our students. A lot of people decided to skip Turo and skip Hire Car, and they're actually getting their dealer's license and the rental car license, and they're getting off the platform as well. So there's gonna be two things in the next three to six months that's gonna show you kind of a decrease of pricing, but also a decrease of competition. Now, if you could sustain during this time, I think you'll be successful once we come out of the other end of this. Hopefully in 2023, things will get back to normal and we'll have our 2019 prices back and we can structures, uh, build everything up. But another thing that's gonna hit is right around that time, you're gonna see your second wave of defaults for like auto loans and everything else. And that's where a lot of these people from Turo, Hire Car and everything else is gonna fall off. Because remember, during the pandemic, there was a lot of people that overpaid for cars. So what's gonna happen is, let's say during the pandemic, they bought a Dodge Charger for $35,000. And now that exact same charger in 2023 is gonna be maybe let's say $25,000. So this person right here that bought it for 23 can technically rent it for maybe 50 bucks a day and make profit and, and, and do okay. Where you, you stuck at 35,000, you may have to rent yours for 65 or $75 a day. And so you're gonna be always over underpriced from this other guy unless you drop your bottom dollar. But if you keep doing that, eventually the more expensive car is gonna cost too much to operate, you're gonna lose money, and you'll wind up having to walk away from that vehicle because you're gonna be basically upside down, not making enough money for the payment, not making enough money for depreciation, and just racking up those miles. So those are kind of the few waves that we're seeing kind of triple out in the effect. Now. One thing that I noticed too is here in Vegas, we're getting a lot of people that are stepping up to hire car. They're doing more weekly rentals because they're doing this as a job. So if you are in the rental car business, what I'd recommend is get away from the dailies because like I said, tourism slowly slowing down, but there's a lot of people that don't want to go back to an office job because of the whole, you know, uh, job resignation thing. And then also a lot of people got laid off, they're looking for work. Start looking at like Amazon, Postmates, uh, Uber, Lyft, driver, stuff like that get a Dodge Caravan, put them out there, run them out for, you know, whatever, three, four, five hundred dollars a week, whatever you want to, that's in your market that's accessible, and then put that out there because there's a lot of people right now that don't qualify for traditional financing. Because, you know, when the pandemic happened and a lot of these people got all the stimulus money, they released a lot of the lending records or regulations and people were just buying cars freely. Well, now all that stuff is gone. So they want six months of job stability, they want down payment, they want credit. So a lot of these people have been up and down because of the pandemic and now a lot of people just lost their jobs because of you know the downed economy. So they have nothing else to do. So they have to rent a vehicle from somebody like you guys to put them out there and make money basically renting out vehicles to these people. That's one thing that I've seen that's scaling currently right now in the market and that's probably the only thing that I've noticed. Everything else has just been a slow steady decrease. But once again, let me know in the comment section below if you're in a small area, if you're doing luxury cars, exotic cars, highland cars, and you're doing really well, you know, share with the group, let us know, you know, also it's okay if we disagree. My opinion is different from your opinion and that's okay, we could still be friends. I see people like literally like destroying each other in the comments section over each other's comments. The whole purpose of this channel is to learn to navigate this uh, uh, path of basically going through this recession and downed economy and hopefully coming out on the end so we can grow our businesses and be more successful. Now, how can we make money from a downed economy, a shrinking market when it comes to the rental car business and lowering prices? Now, we talked already about step one, about going to hire a car and doing weekly rentals. That's the first one. The second one is, you guys are gonna laugh, is getting rid of your overpriced vehicles. We are at the peak and it's starting to come down. I just sold a car to gimmethevin.com um, just for fun, just to see what it was like. And within two weeks, my price dropped almost $7,000 on the vehicle I sold them. So this is just letting me know that there's definitely changes in the market when it comes to some of these more expensive cars. So if you believe that you're in an overpriced vehicle right now, I would recommend taking that car, selling it, get rid of it while the market's still hot, and then just wait a month or two, even if you don't have a car, even if you don't have the extra income, just the fact 
then hopefully in about three months from now, you can buy that car for maybe five, six, seven, eight, ten thousand $10,000 cheaper than what you originally paid for it. That'll be the first one of, of decreasing your actual cost. Second thing is start looking at different types of insurance options. I'm sure you guys know that, that Turo has their three different options, and if you go commercial, you can use your own insurance, which I never recommend because, like I said, you claim once, twice on your policy, they kick you off. But constantly, as a business, look for new insurance. I always hire different multiple brokers with different companies to see what's the best rate I can get. You know, there's a lot of other insurance things that we cover in our courses, um, but I can't go into that on here. But there's a lot of stuff that you could do while you're growing your business and building your rental car business. Now, a next thing is, is if I were you guys, I would definitely start working on getting your rental car license. The reason is, is when you have a rental car license, it opens you up to much more possibilities. You can do several things. You can rent by the day, by the hour, by the week. You can't do monthly in every state. You have to do weekly. So you can do four week contract and then they just have to come back and renegotiate it. But you can rent cars, trucks, motorcycles, boats, jet skis, whatever you want, whatever you think that'll make money in your market. So one of the things that I tell and some of my uh, students is I have uh, students that do different types of businesses when it comes to rentals. So what I did, and I'm sure you guys have seen my videos, I did U-Haul trucks. People laughed and didn't think there was that much money in these old U-Haul trucks, but any truck with a lift gate is $100 a day, guaranteed. And so we were getting these things for like ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. We were cleaning them up, throwing them on there, and doing deals with construction companies where they'd run them for 30, 60, 90 days, six months. And we were absolutely killing it. Also, you can do commercial vehicles. I don't know if you've ever seen trucks with utility beds. You could rent those things out as well. So this way you can capitalize on the market because like I said, construction is booming. There's a lot of people that are still building. I'm sure it's gonna slow down, but they still need work trucks to go out there. Also, another funny one is I have a student in, in uh, Texas. We got him his dealer's license, we got him his rental car license, and he decided to get out of the actual car business and he started renting trailers. Because he would buy these trailers for a thousand bucks and he would rent them out for a hundred dollars a day. And it was an ingenious idea down there because there was nobody out there. So if you had to pick up, let's say a jacuzzi or you bought like a really big table, you know, where do you buy or where do you rent a trailer? You can't, U-Haul, they have the, the car trailers where things just fall through the middle. Where this guy had flatbed trailers for a hundred dollars a day. Now he's got a little over 60 trailers. Um, he does forklift trailers, two car hauler trailers, um, heavy equipment trailers, um, even the semi uh, big dumpster truck uh, trailers does all that stuff. So once you get your license, there's going to be much more opportunities for you to grow your business in the rental car market. Don't get crushed into just believing that Turo is the only way. Now Turo is a good platform to get started, but it's not the way to grow your, I guess your uh, company and build volume because every time you make a step forward, Turo is gonna take a piece of that pie. Plus you run the risk of at any time, we've done a few videos about this, I've seen people get kicked off the platform for some BS reasons. Now there are a lot of people that get kicked off for legit reasons, but there's some where like if you're driving a car and this is one of my students, the, the customer driving the car, couldn't make it back on time, said that the car was unsafe, it was shaking and vibrating, and so he left it there at the airport and took off. So he didn't have to bring it back to the customer. Not only did the customer get the money back, he got a bad mark against himself on uh, Turo, and then he had to go prove that there was nothing wrong with the car. Well anyways, he had three of these people come within one month, and they basically kicked him off the platform. You know, and so that's some of the stuff that you don't want to run, put all your eggs in one basket. If you're doing Turo, make sure you also do hire car. Put them, put two cars on separate ones. If you guys are worried about that, um, their exclusivity contract, that's fine. Put one car on one platform, put another one on the other one. Just don't put all your eggs in one basket. And while you're building this and you're becoming successful, really think about getting your dealer's license and your rental car license so this way you can expand and grow your business. But anyways, I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. That was my little ramble for the day. Um, we are having a 100K special next week, um, so stay tuned for that. If you have any questions to answer in that, also put in the comment section below. It's just gonna be 100K Q&A. Um, that's gonna be the name of the video. But anyways, I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. Once again, subscribe to us, smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, and follow us on Instagram at Lucky uh, Lopez, and we'll see you next time.